Hi, everyone. My name is Ben Walker. I am a core maintainer on the uh, SPDK project working for Intel. And today I'll be speaking about high performance NVMe virtualization using SPDK and a new technology called VFIO user. So today we'll start with um, a discussion of the standardization and some background on the VFIO user protocol and how that's going in the industry. Uh, then we'll move on to how SPDK is using that protocol to emulate NVMe devices and present those virtualized devices into uh, virtual machines, uh, particularly through QEMU today. Uh, we'll, we'll then talk about how SPDK has also implemented a client library primarily for testing, but uh, it may serve some purpose uh, other than that in the future. And then we'll close talking about uh, performance numbers. Okay, so let's dive into the standardization of VFIO user. So the background is several years ago, uh, there became an increasing realization uh, across the industry uh, by several of the players that we need to be able to present fully emulated NVMe devices into virtual machines that are backed by outside processes. So QEMU and such has virtualization um, of NVMe devices baked into it, but it's not designed for, for performance, it's designed for feature validation. Um, we instead need the ability to run a separate storage process outside of the virtual machine that is doing all of the uh, storage virtualization and storage technology uh, you know, that various vendors want to implement and presenting devices into virtual machines that look like local NVMe devices. So um, you know, today we would have solved this problem or, or before today we would have solved this problem using something like vhost user that's presenting vertio block or vertio SCSI devices into the VM. But the real drive here is to be able to emulate actual NVMe instead. So this technology, VFIO user, was initially conceived uh, four years ago, five years ago at this point, um, particularly for SPDK and for NVMe. But I do want to point out that um, the VFIO user protocol is now much more uh, broad than just storage, and you can actually emulate any type of device into a virtual machine, including a NIC, a graphics card, whatever. So what is VFIO or virtual function IO? This is a subsystem in Linux um, for programming the IOMMU and for discovering devices on the various buses, particularly PCIe. Um, and getting access to those device resources from a user space process. In short, this is a framework for writing user space drivers. Now the original uh, intent uh, behind this when Linux added it was to use this to implement PCI pass-through to virtual machines. And so the, the VM is a process running on the, the host machine and it would start up and it would discover the the PCI devices, unbind them from the kernel driver, the host kernel driver, rebind them to the VFIO PCI driver built into Linux, and then it would map the bar and then expose them ultimately to the guest OS. However, this also happens to be the way SPDK works. Uh, so the NVMe, CVDMA, DSA drivers, all the user space drivers in SPDK use exactly the same interface to uh, right, user space drivers that are not then exposed to a virtual machine, but are just used directly from a process. So that technology has existed for some time. What we realized we needed now um, was the ability to um, back devices uh, that are back devices with a separate user space process. And so what VFIO does today is it allows us to send ioctals down to the Linux kernel to control directly control physical devices, you know, physical devices not virtualized 
um, from a user space process. Well, what we wanted to do is all of those same operations, you know, map the bar, map memory, um, program the IOMU, all these sort of things. But we wanted to do this on a virtualized device. And that was backed just by software and another process. And so the, the ultimate strategy, this went through many iterations and strategies and, and um, you know, ideas uh, before we arrived at this, but the, the ultimate strategy here that we stuck with was to take basically the same VFIO ioctals that we would send to the Linux kernel and instead transform them into messages that we send on a Unix domain socket to another process. And so that way the client side is, is conceptually performing the same operations that it would have to set up PCI pass-through or something or to write a user space driver. Um, but it's sending those messages instead of you know, doing an ioctal on a file descriptor, it's sending it over a Unix domain socket to another process who is processing the messages and doing what it thinks is best to emulate that as if there were a physical device there. And then so another way to sort of think about this is you know, vhost user is to vhost as vfio user is to vfio. And it's roughly true. Um, so this is another way to emulate devices in user space. Okay, so let, let's cover now a concrete example of how SVDK today is using um, this technology to emulate NVMe devices in the, uh, into a guest operating system. So, um, you know, the, several years ago, the concept of being able to emulate any hardware device uh, from a separate process was first pitched, you know, kind of over time evolved to become VFIO user. But somewhere along that line, there was some test drivers written or test emulators written to emulate very simple devices, GPIO devices or things like that. Um, and then the people working on this, uh, you know, Nutanix, Red Hat, et cetera, Oracle, um, wanted to then emulate a more complex device. Uh, particularly, they wanted to see if we could emulate an NVMe device. And to do that, you need software running, uh, you know, in, in a separate process that knows how to behave like NVMe. So they came to, you know, us, the SPDK guys and said, hey, you guys have a lot of software that does NVMe stuff. Do you have anything that might be able to do this? And the, I, the first thing that came to my mind was that, well, we already have an NVMe over Fabrics target and NVMe over Fabrics is mostly emulating an NVMe device. It's a little different because it's Fabrics and not local, but it's pretty close. Like most of what you need is already there. And it happens that this NVMe over Fabrics target is designed to have a pluggable transport layer. We already supported three transports, TCP, RDMA, and fiber channel. So the original idea was, well, let's just write a shared memory virtualization transport, a VFIO user transport for the NVMe over fabrics target and see how that goes. So this is exactly what we did. We created a new transport plugin for the SPDK NVMe over fabrics target that sits next to TCP RDMA fiber channel. But this transport is a shared memory or a virtualization transport. So it's speaking to the client um, using uh, a combination of the Unix domain socket for the VFIO control messages, and then shared memory after everything has been set up. So the NVMe queues are sitting in shared memory. Uh, either side can pull them. And the, the doorbells are in shared memory. And the, um, the data can be, you know, it is in shared memory, the target can see the, the guest data buffers uh, directly. And so it doesn't have to do a data copy. Uh, and, and this is this is great. This got us most of the way there, except that NVMe over fabrics is slightly different than a memory transport. Uh, you know, a local PCIe device behaves a little bit differently during startup than a fabrics device. And so that's what we'll spend uh, the rest of this talk covering is how we made that work. Okay, and so then, um, this is sort of the, the high level picture of what it looks like once it all came together. You know, on the left is, is QEMU in this case. It, this is technology is not necessarily specific to QEMU, but that's where the initial implementation is. 
Um, and so QEMU is running a, has a virtual machine with some guest operating system. That guest operating system has its regular NVMe driver. Guest operating system is not aware that there is any virtualization going on at all. That NVMe driver, you know, is loaded against a real, what it thinks is a real NVMe device, you know, appears as if it's a local PCIe device. Uh, QEMU is then using its VFIO PCI subsystem to um, basically do PCI pass-through from, you know, what, if it was using the IOCTAL interface, it, it would be literal PCI pass-through from a physical NVMe device. But instead, in this case, it's actually forwarding the same operations it would have done to set up PCI pass-through um, over Unix domain socket to the SVDK NVMe over fabrics target. So these operations are like, um, you know, map, map the bar, set up the IOMMU, things like that. And so SPDK then is handling those messages and doing the right thing. You know, when it says map the bar, well, the SPDK MME or Fabrics target just allocated some memory and it, you know, it shares the memory and that's the bar. It's just, it's just shared memory. It's all virtualized. So uh, once the IO gets over to the NVMe over Fabrics target um, through the transport, it hits common NVMe um, over Fabrics code that's shared between all of our existing TCP, RDMA, fiber channel um, transports already, and eventually trickles down to the, the SBDK BDEV layer, and it can be routed wherever we want it to be routed to, a physical NVMe device, NVMe over Fabrics, you know, Ceph, uh, iSCSI, whatever. We have a lot of these BDEVs in the back that it can ultimately route the IO to. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, some of the challenges, some of the differences between, you know, true NVMe or fabrics versus a local NVMe device that we had to sort of figure out. Um, the first one we hit is that baked into the original NVMe or fabrics design in SBDK was this concept of a listener, you know, something that we we're listening on to accept new connections. And so, um, you know, for TCP, this is like a, an IP and a port, and we're listening there, and, and connections come in, and we're occasionally polling it and calling accept. And when a new connection is, is established, we, we create a queue pair and, you know, send the, the right fabrics messages back and forth on that. But we continue listening on that endpoint, you know, for a long period of time um, to accept new connections. And everything is inherently, you know, um, multi-path and multi-host. Um, you know, because lots of things can keep connecting to you. With VFIO user, however, it's point to point. You know, the Unix domain socket has one person on one end and one person on another, and you're not accepting. You just connect to the your end of the Unix domain socket, and messages will arrive. And so this this code had to shift from the generic part, uh, the common part of the NVMe or Fabrics target, and get pushed down into the individual transports, so that TCP and RDMA can still have a you know a listener and poll on it you know to accept connections, but the VF, VFIO user transport um, just you know connects to the Unix domain socket and you know receives messages. It's it's point to point. So there's probably some continued um, generalization we can do here. Uh, renaming the listener to endpoint might be a better word, but generally we've got you know the logic pushed to where we need it to be. Okay, and then another big one um, is that register reads and writes work very differently for, for PCIe versus fabrics um, in several different ways, which we'll cover here. Uh, first is that, uh, of course, for a PCIe device, these are done with MMIO and MMIO uh, behaves quite differently than the equivalent thing on fabrics would be a, you know, a fabrics property get or set command. And so um, the way this works is, is libvfio user, which is an enabling library I've showed on several slides so far, written by Nutanix that um, basically implements the protocol for us. It's a you know, low-level library that we use to implement the VFIO user protocol. And it's open source and available on GitHub. Um, this provides a file descriptor to um, software that can you can either pull or you can block on um, that file descriptor. And when it's 
it, when it indicates that it has data available, that means someone has done an MMIO. And so we either wake up because uh, we have a background thread, or I think today we actually have switched over to polling the file descriptor. Um, what we do is we take the, the captured request from libvfio user that there was, you know, somebody tried to do a write of four bytes to some offset in the bar in this memory region that we had established early on. We capture that and we generate a fake fabrics property getter set command inside of SVDK and we send it on our admin queue and let it get processed by the generic NVMe, you know, the common NVMe or fabrics code, like we would have if it was a real fabrics command. So this is pretty slick. It sort of unifies the two. Um, the only other challenge with, with that, well, there are two more challenges with that process. Um, one is for an MMIO read, these are blocking operations. And so you, whereas all the fabri fabrics property get and set commands are inherently asynchronous. And so what we do is um, we generate a fake fabric property get command. We send it back to the generic layer and then we, we're essentially blocked um, until we get that processed. Now, everything is emulated in memory. So there's no actual async stuff happening generally in, in the processing of these fabric property get and set commands um, in practice. And so they, they all just complete sort of immediately, um, which is fortunate. So you're, we don't stay blocked for long. And it's only one of the threads that would block like that, um, not the entire target. So uh, that's how we handled the MMIO read. MMIO writes, uh, fortunately, are posted, which means we can just generate the fabrics property set command, send it, and we don't have to wait around. Um, and then the other challenge was the actual set of registers that we have to emulate, that we have to allow the user to read or write, is different for a fabrics device versus a local device, a memory device. And in particular, it's things like the, the <clears throat> registers that set up the admin queue, which I'll cover momentarily. Um, you, you just can't do that on a Fabrics device. It doesn't work that way. Um, but we had to add emulation support in the common code so that we're allowed to read or write those registers. OK, and then so here's, here's the big one. Um, in a Fabrics device, admin queue creation happens in reversed order compared to a real fabrics device, or sorry, a, um, a local device happens in reverse order compared to a fabrics device. And so um, fabrics devices first create their admin queue by connecting to the remote endpoint, and then they read or write to registers, uh, quote unquote registers, their properties in, in NVMe or fabrics. Whereas a PCIe device first reads and writes registers, then it creates the admin queue. And so we have to find a way to work through this difference. Um, so our strategy is as soon as the listener or the endpoint is created for VFIO user, we create a fake, you know, internal only admin queue immediately. And this admin queue is mapped to a temporary region of memory inside the target where we can place the admin commands. And, but these are not, this is not memory for the admin queue that is in the guest. So the guest cannot yet send us admin commands. It hasn't set that up yet. We don't know where that memory would be located, where they would put their, their admin commands. But we've got a temporary space um, internally. And then the first thing that happens you know, when the driver loads against a local device is it, it begins reading and writing to certain registers, you know, the version register, and then sets up the admin queue, memory region, and things like that. It, it's writing to these registers. And we are capturing those, uh, you know, writes to the bar, those MMIO, and we are sending them as fake fabric property get and set commands on our internal admin queue. And we're processing them as they go. And then when we see the admin queue write or the, the MMIO write to the EN bit, the enable bit, which is 
turning on the entire controller, we go read the location of the real admin queue memory where the guest has said, you know, I've placed my admin queue memory here. And at that point, we remap the pointers in our internal admin queue to point at the real guest uh, admin queue. So that now as we continue to pull for real commands, they're the commands that come from the guest. And so th the key is triggering off of that right to you know, EN to one. When they go to enable the controller, that's the cutover point where we get rid of our temporary internal stuff and make it all live. And so once we got through that sort of initial complexity, um, success, it worked. The, um, we pushed a lot of these patches, like preparation patches early on as they came up ahead of time. And so that by the time the VFIO user protocol, you know, looked um, like it wasn't gonna continue changing, you know, the spec is, is more or less done. Um, the final patch, that went into SVDK to add support for this only contained a new transport plugin, no other changes to SVDK. So uh, all that was great. You know, I was really, really um, happy with the way it turned out architecturally. Um, and we feel this generalization to be able to support local, um, at least memory style NVMe devices in our NVMe over fabrics target is useful for possible additional um, transports that we expect to see over time. In particular, the big one is um, running the SPDK NVMe over Fabrics target as firmware on various accelerator devices that are looking to present NVMe devices to a host system. Um, these are becoming increasingly common. The industry seems to be shifting this way. Um, you know, they have devices that they want to present NVMe disks from, and they're they're fully virtualized by some little SOC, you know, software running on the accelerator. Maybe they have hardware path offloads or something like that. But the initial setup is all basically software running on the um, on these cards. And so we think SBDK is a great fit as a, effectively the firmware on these devices and and provides all of the you know, NVMe emulation for all of the different registers and log pages and, you know, set features and get features commands, et cetera. Um, and then there's additional transports that behave differently than TCP and RDMA, but are still fabrics like quick. Um, these things are not standardized. I don't know if they will get standardized, um, but we, we think we're in a good place going forward. And so then we're really happy with, you know, how SBDK has become a great NVMe emulator. Um, you know, you, you can, of course, use the, the built-in QEMU NVMe emulation to test out new NVMe features, but you also can use SPDK now as an NVMe emulator to test out new features. Um, and, and we believe the SPDK emu, uh, em, emulation is likely closer to a production deployment than the internal emulated QEMU version, uh, mostly because of performance. All right, and now I'll, I'll cover, um, you know, a little bit of a background on, you know, some practical matters that uh, drove us to write, um, you know, a client library um, for VFIO user. Um, because we needed a way to test the VFIO user transport early on in this process. So there was a lot of work going on um, in parallel here. And there was, you know, the definition of the VFIO user spec, there was using it in the SBDK NV mirror fabrics target to emulate an NVMe device. There's work going on in QEMU to, you know, get this upstream so that QEMU supports this directly. Um, the order of these things that happened was, you know, SBDK had something working before even the other two, before it was even fully standardized. And, the protocol was agreed upon. We had something more or less working in, in SPDK, um, but we needed to test it and we didn't have a client. You know, we didn't have anything that could connect to it. So the idea here was, okay, well, let's just write, you know, 
SVDK's NVMe library is designed similarly to the NVMe or NVMe over Fabrics library, where it also has a pluggable transport system. Except the SVDK NVMe library already supported both Fabrics and memory devices because it already supported PCIe, you know, you connect to local devices. So this was even easier. Um, everything had already been worked out. All we needed to do was add a VFIO user transport to the NVMe library. And so we wrote that up and we use this today in our testing to, you know, communicate between a client and a server so we can actually, you know, test the devices, run IO between them, you know, confirm. They're just in two different processes instead of one side being a virtual machine uh, and, and one side being a process. It's just two processes basically doing IPC um, via the NVMe protocol. You know, the, the IPC is basically NVMe commands in, in shared memory rings um, and shared data buffers. So, and this, this works. So here's a picture of kind of how it, it comes together. Um, you know, you use the SPDK NVMe library um, exactly as you would have if it was a local device or a Fabrics device, it's all the same API. It, you know, from a programming standpoint, you don't really actually know that this is a VFIO user device. Um, you know, outside of the parameters you use to like set up the initial connection. And so like all of our tests and benchmark tools and stuff, all these just, just work. Uh, and it connects to the target and it's just shared memory between two processes. And, um, you know, it's great. We're able to benchmark it. We're able to profile it. We're able to run all of our tests uh, and confirm that everything is working correctly. So I, I don't know necessarily that this will have any uh, use in a production environment, but I think it, it might, um, you know, in particular as a way to um, do storage between containers, there's possibly an opportunity here um, or, or any, any scenario where you have multiple processes on the, um, you know, on a single host and they know how to talk to an NVMe device. Maybe they were already using SPDK to talk to NVMe devices. You can basically just gather all of, you know, virtualize NVMe devices into as many processes as you want and back them with, you know, one SPDK NVMe over Fabrics target process um, that's emulating and maybe forwarding the IO to various places or to logical volumes or something like that. So it may have production legs at some point. All right, and then let's, cover uh, performance here to close out um, because you know one of the goals of this is that it is fast. Um, so this is a the first benchmark I'll share here is is covering a little bit about the the threading model behind um, our, our VFIO user design. So this is comparing the SVDK VFIO user inside of the NVMe or fabrics target to SVK's existing um, vhost user target, which is a separate um, target application. And it's doing vertio block as the protocol. And so I, I wanna point out here that SVDK's design for vertio block, um, the target is coupled with our vertio SCSI support. These are done by the same piece of software. And um, unfortunately, vertio SCSI, the protocol itself is, what I would say is heavily stateful. It requires lots of shared state for connections that are in the same session is the terminology SCSI would use. You know, in NVMe terminology, this is uh, Q pairs in the same controller. Uh, and so unlike NVMe with SCSI, if you add more connections um, to the same backing disk, uh, there's like shared counters and stuff. And so you have to take locks or you have to do all the processing for a single disk on one thread. And we benchmark both ways in SBDK, you know, over the years and actually doing it all in one thread is faster than locking uh, in, in our measurements. And so that's exactly what we do. The Vertio, our Vertio target only supports processing IO for a single disk from one thread. So if you have more than one disk, it'll use more than one thread. But any individual disk that you're exporting, virtual disk that you're exporting, is only being driven by one thread on the target side. And it's, it's this Vertio SCSI um, protocol issue um, that basically drives that. 
And of course, the NVMe design is all part of NVMe over fabrics, and NVMe does not have this problem. You, you, know, you can process I.O. on all of the Q pairs in NVMe independently. There's no shared state. And um, so the NVMe over fabrics target in SVK is, is designed to take advantage of this so that you know, if you have one disk with 32 Q pairs, those 32 Q pairs can be processed by you know, anywhere from one to 32 cores, one to 32 different threads, all with no locks. And so what I'm showing here is, you know, we give the we throw a whole lot of I/O at a single virtualized disk, virtio block, and a, and a VFIO user NVMe device, um, so that the target is CPU bottlenecked. You know, we're just throwing so much I/O at it, and the backing disk here is not a, a NAND SSD; it's a, a null disk, so it can go like infinitely fast. Um, and so we get the the target into a CPU bound state. And then we scale the target and say, OK, target, you get one core. Now you get two cores. Now you get three. Now you get four. And we look at the performance. And I'm showing just a snapshot here of at four cores, you see that the, the NVMe device is, is outperforming the block device by a lot because it's able to actually use more than one thread, more than one core per device. You know, There's only one emulated device here. So that that's. Number one, I wanted to point out is the threading model is much better. Uh, number two, I wanted to point out is that um, it's not just that it's faster at four cores, it actually is linearly scaling as you add cores. Um, and you can add as many as you like. There really are no locks. Uh, it, it will just continue to scale. There's no shared memory, no, it just scales. Um, so this is showing the same scenario where we're throwing a lot of I/O at a single disk. Um, that's a, a null disk, and it's you know infinitely fast, effectively. And so we're getting the target into a, a CPU-bound state, and then I'm showing one, two, and four cores for the NVMe implementation. And you see that it's it's basically linear. You know, you take the base performance, you multiply by the number of cores, and that's what you get, more or less. Okay, and then I'll, I'll close with uh, this chart is more complicated than it seems, but this is a measurement of single thread performance. And this is all taken on a P5800X SSD, a real SSD. And I think the easiest way to cover this is to go right to left here. So that the pink bar on the far right is running the SPDK NVMe perf benchmark bare metal on that P5800X SSD. And it's, you know, these are in hundreds of thousands of IOPS. Um, on the one SSD. <clears throat> and um, so the pink has no virtualization. It's just a local SSD <laughs> running the SPDK benchmark. That's like it, the real performance of that SSD. It can't go any faster. Um, the next bar over from right to left, the purple bar, is introducing, um, it's taking the SPDK NVMe over fabrics target. It's adding the P5800X SSD as a BDEV to it, creating a virtual NVMe uh, over fabric subsystem with that uh, SSD as one of the namespaces, exporting a virtualized NVMe controller to a virtual machine in QEMU. That virtual machine guest operating system is then Linux that boots up. And it sees a what it thinks is a physical NVMe SSD, but it's emulated. The namespace happens to be backed by a local physical NVMe SSD, but all of the register state and all that log page and stuff, these are all emulated. And then inside that guest, which is running Linux, we unbind the Linux NVMe driver, we bind the VFIO PCI driver in Linux, and then we run SPDK inside the guest, uh, kernel bypass as we normally would, against that virtualized NVMe device. And so the SPDK driver in the guest in this case is using the PCIe transport because it thinks it's a real PCIe SSD. But the memory it's writing to, the bar and stuff, is actually shared memory. It just doesn't know that. Um, and then the target is polling, you know, is, is watching for the doorbell writes. It's pulling the commands out of, out of the host, you know, the guest system's memory. It's 
then sending real commands down to the P5800X SSD um, as fast as it can and com sending completions back like that, right? So it's basically proxying the commands. And we see that it's doing this with effectively no overhead. Now it is burning a CPU core. Now this CPU core is not very busy. So you could do this for many, many SSDs um, on that one core, but the performance overhead from the guest point of view is effectively zero to get a fully emulated NVMe SSD relative to actually just doing PCI pass through of the whole disk. Okay, and so then the final two bars, the blue and the green um, are again, a virtualized setup with a, you know, that the same as the purple setup um, where you have a QEMU virtual machine running Linux and what we're doing here is the target side in the blue one is um, doing the VFIO user NVMe, the same as the purple. And the green is actually doing the old um, Vertio block uh, protocol with SVDK vhost user uh, target. And the difference between the blue and the purple here is that in the blue side, we are uh, leaving the Linux uh, kernel in the guest NVMe driver bound to the device so that it shows up in the guest as like dev NVMe 0 N1. And the green device is going to show up as like, you know, slash dev slash SDA or whatever. And then we're just running FIO from the guest um, on these two kernel block devices. And so we see there's some additional overhead for using a NVMe device from FIO in the Linux kernel in that guest relative to using a Vertio block device. And so we would like to go figure out, it's not, not a big amount, it's like pretty small, but we would like to go figure out why the Linux kernel stack for Vertio block is faster than NVMe. And that's, that's not what we would have expected. Um, so, so that will be worked on over time. This is not a, a huge difference here. Um, and we still believe that, you know, this blue mode here is totally worth it because remember the, the guest in this case is running its regular NVMe driver. It, the guest could be Windows, the guest, you know, you can boot off of these NVMe disks because the BIOS has an NVMe driver. Whereas with the green box, you know, the green column here, the, um, the Vertio device, you have to have a Vertio driver in your operating system, which Linux has, but Windows does not. And, you know, FreeBSD, does not, you know, things like that. Um, so everything has an NVMe device. And so it's much more convenient to be able to do uh, NVMe emulation rather than Vertio block emulation. So we believe this performance gap will get closed. It's, it's not very big. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. Um, you know, please take a moment to rate this session when it's done. Um, I appreciate your time, thank you.